and my alarm going off for the for the hangout. All right, that's exciting. Hey, this is Mark Harris here, and hope everybody's doing well today. And we have a really special hangout training that I'm really excited about because, you know, ultimately, all of us here are in business. We're entrepreneurs, CEOs, business owners of all kinds, uh, speakers, authors, coaches, coaches, trainers, experts, infopreneurs. And, you know, we're all about obviously selling more, right? So this sell more hangout is really specifically designed to help us to sell more. And to, to, we have some great people uh, that we're going to be talking with today. And of course, my co-host, Dave Van Hoos is with us. Hello, Dave. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Great. So we're going to talk about some really exciting things today. And of course, I'm really excited because, um, you know, ultimately, nothing gets done in business unless something is sold, right? So, uh, Dave, as a matter of fact, why don't you just tell us like maybe 60 seconds about the sell more concept, just so kind of everybody has a little bit of background on that. And then we can talk, go into some of the other aspects of this hangout. Well, the reason we wanted to put this on is because that statistically you're better off taking all your life savings, everything that you have, going to Vegas and putting everything on black is a better statistic than starting a business. In fact, 90% of most businesses will fail within five years or less. And basically when somebody starts a business, that is putting their life savings, their family's life savings, their house, everything into that on a statistic of failure. And I researched, Mark, the number one reason why most businesses fail. And why do you think the number one reason why most businesses fail, Mark? It's got to be, well, from a lack of sales or planning, one <laughs> of the two. Yeah, most people would say, well, we don't have the capital or our product or we don't have the management. Uh, but the number one challenge is, is how do you get a customer? And we see a lot of people struggling. You know, how do you get a customer? Because what customers equal is more cash flow, more profitability, which leads to a better lifestyle, and at the end of the day, where you're helping and serving more people. So I want to kind of massage the word sell more. The reason we do that is because it's a catchy title, and everybody needs to do that, but it's the thing that nobody wants to do. And But we've got to address this problem or this challenge because 95% of the people that are on here will fail if they don't figure this out. That makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. And think about it this way. You know, you know, Jim Rohn was one of my mentors, and he said something really, you know, profound. He said, look, you know, when you, when you have money, you can handle all your problems in style. Everybody's got problems, but you can handle them in style, right? And, of course, if you're a business who's not making any sales, you don't have any money to handle any of your problems, and therefore you can't fix them. But if you have those sales, you can make the, the rest of it work, which means you can have a successful enterprise. So that's, that's a, a beautiful way to get going on this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's one of the biggest things I found out as a business owner. Uh, Mark, I, is it okay for you if I share a quick story? Absolutely. So some of you might know this and some of you might not, but uh, when I first started uh, my career, I got my degree in sports medicine as a professional football trainer. And I was in my passion and my love, which was training athletes and helping athletes after they got injured. So what happened to me, unfortunately, long story short, is I got injured and then had to reinvent myself. And I went down to the courthouse, Mark, in Clearwater and saw a foreclosure auction. I saw them bidding off houses at the courthouse steps. I even saw them bid off a house for $100. <laughs> I was like, man, I could have bought a house today at the courthouse for $100. But when I was down there, I had this idea. I'm like, what if I took this foreclosure listings and put them onto a website and call it foreclosuresdaily.com? So that was my idea. And this idea was going to help people save time, energy, and money. And I took my credit card out. So I actually started my business on my credit card. I know some of us have. You can relate to that. And I launched this business. And it was a most amazing concept 10 years ago to streamline this information. Mark, I launched it the first month I opened. Guess how many customers I got? Well, let's see. Um, based on what I can tell, and since I've heard the story a couple of times, <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero, right? I got yeah. zero customers. I, was, I thought if you had a good idea, customers would show up. And that's my level of thinking as a business owner. And so I did what most business owners do, is do what? I made the product better. I launched it the second month. Mark, guess how many customers I got? Uh, one. 
No, zero. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one myself. That was it. Uh, <laughs> you sold yourself. I sold myself. So what we had to find out is is how do you get a customer? Because imagine this. Picture this. When you start your business, uh, cash flow is like oxygen. If you're not giving your business oxygen, it's going to die. And that's one of the very important things. Now, this is a topic that's a real edgy topic because the human brain, I know how the human brain works, it doesn't want to sell. It doesn't want to create cash flow. It doesn't want to create this. So here's what I want to challenge everybody that's listening to it. Opening up your mind to greatness. Get rid of all the patterns and all the beliefs that you have and open up because we've got some amazing people on here that are going to share their specialized knowledge with you. And you can consider what you like, disregard what you don't. But I believe, and my, per and, uh, uh, and my promise to you is, is that by the end of this training here, you're going to know specifically of how to get more customers, work with more affluent people, and have more fun, get more cash flow in your business. Right, Mark? I love that. I think that is profound, and I, you know, it's really something exciting you just mentioned there about you went from not being able to make any sales to simply try to make the product better. And I, I don't know if you any of you even know this, but the most pro prolific business people of all time, which is you know Thomas Edison, you know he actually had 1,200 inventions. He invented, of course, the light bulb, 200 inventions for the electrical power distribution system. He created all kinds of amazing inventions which changed our life. He invented. General Electric, the power distribution network, motion pictures, audio recordings, and the, and the like. And you know, his first invention. Okay, he actually spent tons of time, and it was a specific invention. He sold to Congress. He tried to sell it to Congress, and Congress said we don't want it. But they loved the invention. They thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And he committed himself. <laughs> I'm never, ever, ever going to create another invention unless I first find out who uh, who wants to buy it. And, and Whoa, that is wow. so, so important. That was, so his first invention, he learned that lesson, and he never did it again. So That's a great story because some of the things that uh, we're going to talk about on this training is people try to build something. You know, me and Dustin and all of us here, hey, I've been writing my book for two years. You know, I've been waiting to put my seminar on. I got, I've got this whole thing. And one of the things we're going to talk about is to sell it first, build it later. Test the market. We're going to talk uh, today on this webinar. Justin's going to talk about how do you get customers with marketing. He's going to talk to you about some unique tools and strategies and how to get more customers through that. Uh, I know Kari's going to talk about how to get on TV and how to celebritize your brand. How do you take your brand from ordinary and make it extraordinary and get the affluent customer? Uh, Deanna's going to talk about, she's got a lot of great information to share with us on here about using joint ventures. Uh, of how do you a uh, joint venture with people, and how can you you know make a million dollars quickly with that strategy? Dutch is going to talk about phone rooms, call centers, selling big products. So we're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to share with you a lot of practical tools and strategies that you can have. And what we're teaching is not theory. This is what we're doing right now that you can model. Okay, well, let's do then. Let's go with the, with this. That sounds fantastic. I'm really excited about this because we're going to learn a multi-dimensional view and actually a multi-dimensional conversation around this whole idea of selling more. And I really want all of you to participate. So, a couple things we want to do is the first thing is we're going to do ladies first. So I'm thinking we're going to go with Deanna first. Uh, if that's okay, Deanna, is that good? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, and then so what we're going to do is if you guys have any questions for anybody, just go ahead and uh, put them below this video. If you're not to hear, you should be on megahangouts.com forward slash sell dash more forward slash live. Uh, just check the link. You should be here at that page. Otherwise, uh, just make sure that you, you can do some Google Plus uh, comments or something like that. But either way, try to, to let us know any questions you may have. So, Deanna, t uh, Deanna tell us a little bit about you know who you are, what you're currently doing, how you serve your clients in, in, a, in a great way, and, and kind of uh, a little bit about what you're doing right now to serve those people in the selling arena. Awesome. Well, it's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. 
Um, my name is Deanna Rogers, and I've owned several businesses over the last couple years. Um, I've actually owned um, a, co a company called AMG, Affiliate Mastermind Group, and that's where we actually taught people how to go out and get joint ventures and build your business based on uh, using joint ventures. I've also owned a company uh, called JV Agency, which we did with Dave and Dustin, and um, that did very well. Um, and so basically over the years I learned in this industry is that the only way to build your business is by using joint ventures. And a lot of people are not using them the correct way. Um, and they're not building a pipeline. And that's the one thing that I encourage people is, is they, it's just like any other business, you have to have a pipeline of, of not just customers, but of your joint ventures and of keeping that healthy, keeping that list healthy, not just for customers again, but just for joint ventures and keeping those relationships very solid um, because that the relationship is what is going to help make uh, the money for your business and see that grow. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you know, one of the things I always try to tell people is you have these great big huge Goliath um, companies out there like um, Singular. Singular was absolutely um, formed by a joint venture with SBC and Bell South. People, a lot of people don't know that, but there's tons and tons of these big Goliath companies out there that actually have grown to their status because they merged and had joint ventures with other smaller companies. And so what I've done is, is I've worked with a lot of people over the last 10 years, and we help um, put those people together that might be in the same niche or in the same business or uh, that might have the same type of product or program and you can actually do a joint venture together and grow your business in 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 the smart way by doing it <clears throat> with other people that might have your strengths or weaknesses that you may not have and by growing that business um, so you know it's it's not anything fun and sexy but it's definitely a um, it's a great way to grow your business and I think a lot of people just don't realize that joint ventures is an integral part of growing their business and making money now it's really exciting. Deanna's very humble uh, about a lot of things. I mean, she's she's doing some. She's got a lot of projects going. I mean, she's currently managing. Uh, I think all of the events for uh, Ryan Dice and his whole uh, program with uh, Traffic and Conversion uh, Summit and other things like that. But I want everybody to know who's here from from my list who who uh, knows that I produced the Joint Venture Summit. I wanted to give a special little thank you to Deanna because uh, she actually helped me with a lot of the aspects of the event side of the Joint Venture Summit. Of course, she's she's a, a, a leading worldwide expert on joint ventures herself, but uh, she helped me a lot with uh, the summit to do some really great things, so I wanted to thank her for that as well. Um, so, so anyway, but uh, Deanna, so tell us a little bit about why learning to sell more and some sell more strategies, why are they so important, why are they so powerful, why are they so needed for people to really start really focusing on in their business? Why using sell more for like this event, for example? Is that what you're asking? Sure. No, well, just like for in general, like okay, in your case, it's joint venture. So, uh, right. if, if, so why is it so important for them to actually focus on them and to actually do some things that will actually advance their sales with joint ventures? And maybe a couple uh, examples of how that's helped some of your clients specifically do some things, or how it can help the people who are watching. Well, I mean, first of all, I think they need to take the first step in just getting around other people that are in the same business with them or that may have the same type of model. Unless you're going to events like this, you're not you're not surrounding yourself with the right people that could even be a joint venture. So um, I'm talking from the joint venture side of things. You need to be going to these type of events where you are learning how to buy more and sell more and grow your business. And you need to be looking at the people in that room. I always, when I go to an event, I always look around to see who could I work with. And the one thing I always do is I always go up to somebody and I'll say, how can I work with you? How can I support you? How can we do business together? And um, is that some noise on, on our yeah, end? I'm not sure what where that's at. I, I think it's okay. on Dave's side, but uh, it sounds like he's in, he's getting a hit by a train. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> anyway, no, but well, anyway, go ahead, Dina. And, and you know, so I think and I think the one thing is by by going and going to events like what we're doing with the uh, future of selling more, you're going to be working with other people that are like minded like you that are wanting to take their business to the next level that want to use uh, the strategies that Dave, Dustin, uh, Roland, and all these other um, great teachers, Kari will be teaching and then while you're there I'm gonna put a plug in there I want you to go in there and start learning how to make joint ventures the one thing that people don't do they spend thousands and thousands of dollars and go travel and do events and all that and then they do nothing with the leads that they they've learned or that they've used while they're at that event and, and I think it's really sad because people don't realize they're leaving money on the table when they're not following up with those leads and when they're not making joint ventures with the people that they've met at these events and I can tell you 
just by the people that we have already registered at the Future of Selling More event. There's some massive uh, clientele there. Um, great opportunity for people to make joint ventures. And so while I'm there, I'm actually going to be helping people and encouraging them to go and connect with people that might be a great fit for one another's businesses. So um, that's, that, I'm really excited to see what we can do while we're there. That, that's fantastic. I really like that a lot. You know, if you had to give, you know, one, and, and I'll, I'll turn this over to Dave after after this, but if if you could give everybody like one kind of case study or strategy, a, a sell more strategy that they could use to actually uh, catapult their uh, sales, maybe even in a short period of time, or maybe it's more of a long-term thing, but a fantastic one that they could really uh, supercharge. What's your either favorite, maybe joint venture strategy, or the one that uh, maybe that you can help people really do some uh, need stuff with quickly or something like that? Well, I mean, I think I think mine's easy. Mine is completely it's just joint ventures. I think you should be using joint ventures. I mean, it increases your profits. It, um, it'll help you share your expenses. It grows your business. It builds your pipeline. And so to me, um, I feel like, you know, if you're not doing that, you're, you're losing a massive stream of income in your business. And so um, my, mine's really simple. Mine is simply you should be using joint ventures in your business. If you're not, we can show you how to do that while you're at this event. Um, I'm, I'll be happy to be there to help you, you know, put you together with other people that may be in that right uh, same business or in the same like-minded um, area space of what you're doing. But, um, you know, you really should be. It's, it's, there's a, it's $40 trillion businesses out there that this year alone that have done just doing business on joint ventures alone. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing that with your business as well. I so. love it. I love that. It makes a lot of sense. Now, Dave, um, why don't you take it away and probably should, uh, uh, on our, our, our next guest, should probably be uh, Dutch. Uh, so, um, but other than that, uh, thank you so much, Deanna, for, for that. Yeah. That's really exciting. So I'm looking forward to actually meeting you in person at the event, if not sooner, because you're Absolutely. about an hour, hour from me right now. I'm in San Antonio. You're in Austin. So anyway, take care about that. I appreciate it. And please stick it around because we're going to talk about a couple things at the end here we want your opinion on. Okay, yeah, go ahead. One of the things that uh, – can consider when I started my business and I was getting zero customers uh, we asked the question of who is our ideal customer so if everybody grabs a pen and paper out right now what you really want to ask the question is is who is your ideal client and what does that person look like and then when you get real specific about who that ideal client is then the next question ask is is who's got the list of them and, and that's one of the brilliant things that Deanna is going to be talking about at our event coming up and also, if you haven't heard about our Sell More event, it's going to be in Irvine, California, uh, July 24th through the 28th, and we're going to be actually doing joint ventures right at the right at the event. Uh, Deanna is going to be uh, doing a presentation, an edu educational talk on how to set up joint ventures, and then we're going to do speed joint venture networking right there. So if you're looking to get on more stages, looking to do more webinars. Uh, this is a must to be. She's going to go over that. So what me and Dustin did is, is a quick strategy. Is we asked a question when I had foreclosures daily. Who's got our ideal client? And we found out that realtors could use foreclosures. And so what we did is we joint ventured with all the board of realtors associations. We signed up for the board associations. They had about five thousand realtors at each board. We would then do a joint venture uh, and do uh, a seminar at the board of realtors. And we made millions and millions of dollars just by asking the question is, who is our ideal client and who's got them? And I know, Deanna, you're going to be talking a lot about that and how important that is. Yes. Very good. And uh, Mark, uh, you wanted to have Dutch. Uh, so a lot of you, if you haven't met Dutch, um, I've known Dutch for about seven years now. And... And uh, he has a lot of experience. I think that's one of the beautiful thing about all the trainers uh, and speakers that are on here is we brought people that are actually doing what they teach, not just reading a book and taking a theory. Dutch has over 10,000 hours uh, in doing seminars, selling big packages from the back of the room. Uh, also, how do you set up a phone set or how do you hire a salesperson? Uh, Dutch, you're an expert. In, in Dutch, uh, in this industry, can you hear me, Dutch? Uh, in this, I know you're busy probably selling something right now. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to unmute yourself, by the way. Um, you can hear me, right? There we go. Now I can hear you. Awesome. Uh, if you were to suggest of why is it important uh, to sell more in a business? 
Why is it important to sell more? Do you want to be in business? <laughs> That's a good question, right? You know, I, I love the art of selling. I love being in the business that we're in. And, you know, I, I have a story from, you know, the very first time when I first started in this business. And I had, had a, a group of real estate investors who had asked me to come and, and teach them influence and teach them sales. And it was, you know, I actually still had a job back then. I was an executive recruiter. We're talking almost a decade ago. And I remember they had asked me to come in and teach the four of them, and they were going to pay me you know, $750 each to come and do it. So I was getting paid $1,500 to come and teach four investors for, for three hours. And I'm like, that's pretty awesome. And I remember leaving Las Vegas because I attended a seminar in Vegas and I had to go out to a thousand palms. And I remember driving there and I remember the night before I was leaving there, I was putting together a presentation. If it, like any other speakers, you might have put together one or two presentations the night before you showed up somewhere. And being in my young 20s, I, uh, you know, put things off a little bit and I remember driving there and it was just like felt like the longest drive I left like at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning and I was driving forever and if anybody's ever driven out of Vegas in the middle of the summer it, it, it's kind of hot and as I'm driving I knew I had to be there at 8 a.m. and I'm driving and then this dust storm hurts and it's literally like the worst dust storm I think I had ever seen in my entire life and it gets so bad and that I have to pull off to the side of the road because it's basically a complete, you know, you wouldn't call it a whiteout because it's not snow, but dust out. And I pull to the side of the road and I'm like, what am I going to do right now? It's like, am I going to continue to go? And this is like, you know, a decade ago, I wasn't as handy with a cell phone and a GPS as I am today. Plus, I was driving out to this place in Thousand Palms, which really the GPSs weren't real accurate. And I'm, I'm like, just so frustrated. And I'm like, I'm going to screw up my first speaking engagement ever. The first time I'm ever spent to go and teach somebody, and I'm like, oh, man. And so then I finally get back on the road, and I start driving again. And and I'm driving, you know, I had a one of the first times I had had my dream car. And so it was a, it was a you know, I think at that point in time, it was like a 2004 uh, brand-new Mustang. And, it, you know, it was souped up and lowered down, and it had the big wheels and tinted windows. And I felt really, really special, right? Well, that car's not made for driving in a dust storm and in the desert. And so, like, it's not acting the best. And then and then another dust storm hits, and I have to pull over to the side of the room again, and now I'm lost, and I'm thinking, oh, man, maybe I should just, you know, go back to Vegas. Maybe I should turn around. Maybe I shouldn't show up. And now that my cell phone starts to ring because it's like 8.15. I'm already 15 minutes past when I'm supposed to be there. I'm like, do I answer the phone? Do I not answer the phone? Like, do I just show up? You know, I'm, I'm late, and, and I, I answer the phone. I, I say, yeah, Mark, I'll, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. And he's like, oh, that's great. Thanks thanks for letting us know. So now it's like 9.15, and now they're calling me again, and I and I let it go to voicemail this time. And it goes to voicemail, and they're like, and on the voicemail, like, you know, you're not going to be on time. You know, it's 9.15, and, you know, we probably need to cancel, cancel, cancel you showing up. And I'm like, damn if I'm calling them back because I'm showing up. So I pull in at about 9.30, and, the, and they got about six different Rottweilers in this huge mansion area, right? And so I'm like, I'm supposed to go teach these guys in their, like, 5,000-square-foot mansion about sales. And I'm 20, you know, I was 24 years old at the time, and I'm like, all right. And so I pull in, and these guys are in a full-on argument. Two of the investors are literally screaming at the top of their lungs, like, I am going to murder you. And they're just going at each other. And I'm like, wow, once again, I'm thinking, maybe I should turn around. Maybe I, like, shouldn't show up. And I remember getting getting out of my Mustang thinking these dogs are going to eat me, right? And and I go walking up to the front door with these two guys arguing who I, who I had never met before. And I walk right in the front door because they had it, had it open and they had a, had a maid there or, or, or a personal assistant that kind of welcomes me in and takes me into the room. I'm supposed to be meeting with them. And I remember just walking in, putting my laptop on the table, turning it around, to face the four individuals, and there's now two of them there. Now there's all four of them there, kind of just standing and looking at me. And I remember just turning my laptop around, turning the presentation on, and going ahead and saying, all right, sit down, let's get started. And I remember just rolling right into it, like not even giving them a chance to talk to me or to stop me because we had been late and stuff. And I remember at the end of that presentation, it was a three-hour presentation, I remember selling. And I'm like thinking to myself, because I had taken the one 15-minute break, I remember going to the bathroom during the 15-minute break, just like sweating bullets, like, like, are they, are they enjoying this? Are they not enjoying this? I mean, I feel like they're enjoying it, but I'm not really sure. And all of these different things come up with the first time you're presenting. I remember all four of them bought the $1,500 package, 
And so I made the original fifteen hundred plus six thousand dollars. So I made seventy five hundred dollars for three hours worth of work. And I'm like, wow. When you sell, you better show up. And so, so your number one strategy uh, would be is you got to show up. <laughs> you got to show up. I mean, over anything else, you got to show up. You got to play the game, right? And and for those of you coming out to the Sell More Summit, you got to show up. You got to be there because. I'll tell you, by showing up, you make money. By showing up, you build a better business. And and over the years, you know, my 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 sales strategies have gone, you know, through the roof. Um, and and I use the story because it, it actually, Dave, if I said one of the most powerful techniques that I love when it comes to selling is the power of the story, the ability to to share a story, the ability to engage, the ability to pull people in, the ability to create a connection and a relationship is just incredible. With, with people when you're doing business with them and, and people love technique and they love tools but I'll tell you they, they, they grow fond of you and they build a relationship through mm -hmm. story and and over the years you know Dave you taught me this and, and I love the way you share this with me I was sitting in your audience one time and you were talking about how you know you through so many presentations I mean you've done more presentations than anybody I've ever met in my entire life <laughs> like, like just ridiculous the things you split tested blue tie red tie you know, you know, gray sports coat, blue sports coat, you know, purple stripes, pinstripes, you know, and all of these different things. And I remember one of the things I started doing with my speaking is I started checking the surveys. And I started looking at the surveys post event and I started seeing that if I shared certain stories, I got a certain rating during this during the seminars. And then if I shared different stories, I got another rating. And so I started realizing there were there were certain stories that, that caused an audience to have a completely different opinion about when I was doing business with them. And, and, and so I love that as a technique. And then if I sh shared the, the last thing before, before you got to systematize and you got to integrate everything you're doing with, with, with one frame, one, one, one train of thought. And, and it starts with your first agreement to your last agreement being congruent all the way through the process. And I probably learned that more from Dustin and, and listening to him over the years and just realizing that the, the integration between your marketing and your sales is also very critical because if if your if your people that are doing selling for you are, are are saying something different than the conversation that your audience has going on in their heads at the current moment, then you're not going to sell anything. And so, understanding the existing conversation that you've created through your messaging, through your branding, through your story, through your marketing, and matching that up with what you're doing from a selling standpoint, now you have a congruent process that takes you from start. To finish, and an audience feels like it's seamless, or your your tribe feels like it's seamless, and now now you can sell them in a way that they feel good about it. And I and I and, I, and I'll, I'll finish with that. If you can sell, and at the end of selling, whether they buy or they don't buy, your audience feels better about their experience. Then you've done a really fantastic job. And so you know, I think you know, it's just an incredible thing that you've put on here. I think it's the biggest weakness with, with any business owner, whether it's themselves selling or it's getting their people to sell effectively in order to grow and accelerate. I just think it's awesome, brother, and I, I'm so excited that you and Dustin have decided to put this together, together and you've asked me to be a part of it. Yeah, and I'm really excited because you're going to do a very special talk that you've never done before, uh, which a lot of people are struggling with, is how do you sell these big boy packages? How have you heard people selling $100,000 uh, at these events, and I know you're going to reveal your five secrets of how you do that. So, for those who haven't considered coming to our event coming up, uh, you've got to be there because that's just going to give you some great information. Uh, so, I, I want to head over to uh, my partner one Dustin. Quick, one quick uh, before you Dustin. do that, Dave. Before you do that, just a quick little thought. You know, I I was just thinking about this power of story thing, and I've noticed personally, I've noticed that most people don't know how to select the best stories that work to help them promote their business. I mean, they got a lot of stories, they got case studies, they got all kinds of interesting things that happen to them, but do you find that it's better to actually have somebody else help you figure out those stories, or do you, do you think people can figure out which best stories are best really for what they're working on, Dave? Mark, I mean, that, that's a great question, and so one of the things that you have to consider is modeling. So when I first started speaking, I want everybody to understand the speaking business is very similar to the acting business. And so what happened is, is an actor goes to Hollywood and a professional person writes the story, writes the script, and Kari can talk a little bit more about that, is because when you're writing your own core story, what I call your signature presentation or your core story, 
it's really hard for you to come up with that and originate that. So sometimes in my experience, me and Dustin will tell you, it's better to have an outside company or professional really help get that story out of you. And we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, with Kari, a little bit about the acting business and speaking business and how there's some parallels into that. So Mark, that's a good question. So yeah, absolutely. At our event, we're going to be actually helping you to really get that story, uh, which will go on to, to my partner, Dustin, uh, who is a brilliant at helping people create what they call the irresistible offer. So Dustin, real quick, uh, tell us a little about your, your, your credibility. <laughs> uh, and you talking talk to me, Dave? About, yes, Dustin. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was, I was just reading this awesome book. I'm sorry. I was a little distracted by this. Oh, man. Uh, you just always got to point those little jabs, don't you? <laughs> well, just in case anyone didn't see it, it's also right behind me here subconsciously. No, we can't see. you got to move the camera over a little bit. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so Dave, you'd ask me about the power of an irresistible offer, right? Yes. Well, before I do that, I want to do this. Uh, so can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then it's probably like really small, small text, right? So one of the things, Mark, you'd ask about stories. So yeah. what we do is we catalog our stories. So this is like an internal document, if you can see the screen. And, and really wow. the, the key lesson in it is writing down all your stories and then talking about the meaning of those stories. Because the reality is, is a lot of us, we forget uh, – we forget what our what stories we have. We got so many of them, we forget which ones to use. So sometimes it's beneficial to have them all cataloged. And then, what's the point of the story? Is it to increase my credibility? Is it to uh, you know position Dave as the superhero? Is it to uh, you know talk about one of my clients? And so that is uh, very powerful. So anyone can do that. Write down all your stories and then figure out a reason for why uh, for why you would tell that story. And so that's very powerful. The thing, uh, Dave, you'd asked about was irresistible offer, and it's it's my belief, it's it's my belief here at Speaking Empire, just or in general, is that without an irresistible offer, you, you really have nothing. Like you can have a story, and it's so very powerful, so part of the selling process. But when you have that irresistible offer, you don't have to sell. And a really like crude example of this is McDonald's. And I know most of the people, especially Dr. Ron, there haven't set foot in a McDonald's. Since 1982, uh, but the McDonald's story is just, when you're hungry and you walk into a McDonald's, there's no story. Like there's no sale. Like you just the irresistible offer is the value menu or the picture of the hamburger, and you're hungry. And so that speaks to finding the right marketplace, someone that's hungry, and putting the right thing in front of them. And so it's my belief a lot of folks work on all parts of the business, like J Dave talked about earlier, which was working on the product, make it better, um, but he didn't make the irresistible offer better. He just made the like export feature better or the website thing go faster. And so my belief is that everyone should focus on an irresistible offer. Think about what people want and give it to them. Package it. Real quick example is you know we go to seminars, a lot of us, and I suspect if you're here, you've been to a seminar, you a hangout, and you've seen a speaker or presenter talk about Hey, I've got a you know 450 page. Oh, let me grab this this big beast of a book here. This is 450 pages of my best content, right? And the reason why they they communicate that way is it took a lot to create this. This is a baby, right? But the challenge is most people don't hear that. The, the audience doesn't hear that. They just hear they just heard 450 pages. 450 pages equals work to them. And so when you package your offer, which is critical, you want to speak in benefits. And I know uh, a lot of us can speak, speak to that on, the, on this call. But just think about that. They don't care that you have 200 hours of video. They don't care how long it took you to make. They just want to hear the benefits. Hey, by the way, uh, Dustin, that is uh, absolutely – I love that. I, I was muted at the time. I tried to say something about that catalog of stories. I think that is absolutely brilliant. I mean, you take your assets seriously where you literally document those assets in a, in a very powerful way so that you could pull out those at the right time for the right purpose. I, I just think that uh, that story catalog is beautiful. So anyway, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about that. One of the things at the Sell More Summit we're going to be talking about is when you're doing your sales presentation, your webinar presentation, your sales presentation, people are going to have objections. 
Maybe I don't have the time or the money. So the, write, everybody write this down. The best way to overcome objections is through storytelling. So what me and Dustin have done is we've carved out certain stories that we're going to give during our presentations that will help overcome people's objections or help people overcome their self holding belief. Somebody might say, well, I don't have the time to do real estate or I don't have the time to start my speaking business. So we'll have to have a story that overcomes that objection so that way we can help people open it up. Dustin, tell us a little bit more about how do you overcome objections in the offer? Ha <laughs> ha this is this is good. This is advanced stuff. Typically yes, only let's go advanced. for folks at the Sell More Summit or Power Day clients, but uh, I'll give you a little preview of, of what we do. So when we think of an offer, when we think of all the different things, maybe it's a coaching call, maybe it's the, the, the quick start training series, maybe it's a checklist, right? So those are three examples of things that can be in an offer. Well, what we want to do is we want to think of every objection possible. I don't have the money. I don't have time to do this. This is too hard. This won't work in Tampa, Florida or wherever, wherever you're dialing in from today, right? And you want to think about all those objections and have something in the offer that overcomes it. Now, here's the reason why we do this. Imagine if someone missed your whole sales presentation and only saw your offer. They missed your whole webinar. They missed your whole Google Hangout but only heard you describe your offer. Would they be excited? Would they be pumped up enough to want to buy is the first thing. Or if not buy, say, well, Dave, I missed your whole presentation, but you said something really cool at the end. Can you tell me more about that? Like that's our goal as a copywriter, as a marketer, as a salesperson, as a business owner. We want to get people so excited. And so what I want you to do is take a look at your current offer uh, that you have, your product or your service, and ask, if someone only saw the offer, does it overcome the objection? And a real quick example of how to do that is, let's say people want speed. Well, can you call your can you call something in your offer the instant results playbook or the rapid results recipe guide guidebook? You know, so people want results. Also, they want money as well. So if you sell in the business opportunity, instead of calling it you know 460 hours of videos. Can you now call it the million dollar in your home training series, right? So we're speaking in benefits and you want people, again, to stop and say, whoa, what is the million dollar playbook? Like even if you don't know what it is, you want people to be like, hey, what's in that thing? And so that's how we overcome objections in the offer. You know, and Dustin, another thing we do is we're going to be talking about at the event is we're going to bring somebody up right from the audience and I'm going to actually build their irresistible offer because one of the two things that people have to understand is learning is through experiential and we're going to do a lot of experiential thing which we call accelerated learning at our event where we're going to be teaching certain tools and strategies but we're going to be doing it at the event so everybody that attends that event is going to leave we're going to actually help them write their irresistible offer one of the things that we've also created industry toggle bar is what they call the hot button close. So tell us a little bit about the hot button close and that people don't buy features, they buy something else. They definitely buy benefits. So the hot button close is kind of like the objection. You want to handle objections, but people buy for their reason. So I'll give you a real quick example and another plug for the event right here just in case you can't see that right there. So one of the things that we do in the hot button close is we'll put this represents an event. This represents an event ticket. So when you buy my digital product course, when you buy my coaching strategy session from me, I'm going to bonus in, I'm going to include a live event. Now the reason why we do that is for the hot button close that Dave created. And the hot button close says this, people buy for their reasons, not our reasons. So some people we know, they, oh, I'm missing you, Dave. Is that you? They buy the benefit of the they, they, they buy the benefit. They're having a hard time hearing you, Dave. So they buy the benefit of the yes, benefit. Go ahead. They have to buy the benefit of the benefit. The other thing, too, is people like live events. Well, some people don't like live events. Some people like books, right? Some people like coaching calls. And so what we're doing is we're pushing their hot button. So you might not like, you know, you might not like material. Maybe you want to get the, the person, the guru on the phone. Well, that's why we include a coaching call. So we're pushing the hot button of everyone in the audience to get them to make that purchase. And that's the hot button close. So you want to use all these different strategies to key in to further the sale. And that's what we do. Oh, I love that, Dustin. That's really that's that's really a neat 
because you know you know, different people like different modalities different people like different approaches and all that and by the way if anybody wants a uh, persuasion and conversion um, we'll call it a strategy session you know which normally could cost you a lot of, of money this was actually uh, this will be complimentary to you uh, to the right of this hangout there's a little button there that you can click and there'll be a little form that you have to fill out that'll just ask you some questions about what you're doing and what your business is like and things like that and what will happen is um, and somebody will contact you to schedule up a, a strategy session to kind of help you through this as well as uh, a sell more strategy for your business so uh, make sure you do that before the end of this uh, uh, this very important uh, this, this training here because that's a very important thing that would be a next step for you that I think you'll all enjoy. So, uh, Dave, you seems like you're back. Yes, I'm back. And uh, you know, uh, oh, now you're that, muted. I think oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So, what, one of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about is writing these irresistible offers and how important they are. And like I said, we're going to be doing what they call accelerated learning, taking you through experiential process to really help you be able to get more customers and have more fun. Uh, Dustin, real quick, I got one last question. Why should somebody come to the Sell More uh, Boot Camp out in California? Well, they get, they actually, they don't get one, one car, they actually get two. Is anyone else seeing that? <laughs> how, how have you figured out how to clone yeah. yourself? That's that awesome. That is too funny. That's like the magic thing. Like I would just come just to figure out how to clone myself. Uh, <laughs> get more. That's, <laughs> that's really <laughs> Well, Dave, you talked. You asked a, a, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great questions. One that's really important is why should someone come? You know, and, and this, and the story is that at events something magical happens. You know, some people learn magically through experiential learning. Uh, some people learn by hearing it in a live format. But I think the big thing, especially for this audience, if you're here today or if you're in the speaker, author, expert crowd, or heck, maybe you're just a business owner and you're looking to get into this space, it's the connections. It's the types of folks that show up at the events. And uh, we're blessed because we get to work with a lot of thought leaders and gurus and they, they show up at our live events. And so. I can't tell you story after story after story of someone that's come to an event that's rubbed his shoulders with a, a, a Robert Allen, that's rubbed shoulders with a you know Roland, that's rubbed shoulders with Deanna, and their career has just absolutely taken off. Um, you know, I guess a real classic example is is one of the guests on the call, Dr. Ron. I mean, he's out there absolutely rocking it. He stepped into a uh, you know our world, I guess you if you want to call it that, only you know a couple years ago, and he is like. Rocking, and, and we we can talk. We can okay, get him on and, and he can share. I'm on a call. I understand. I hear that. So, okay. Uh, so, one, little, one little quick thought yeah, here cool. is before we um, uh, go, is before we get off of uh, the Dustin thing. Actually, Deanna had a had a had a quick little point for you. Make sure you unmute yourself, there, Deanna. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Dustin. I I did want to just go back to what you were saying about uh, making sure that your story uh, was very important. And the reason why is because um, just an example. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a client that it was actually um, I think I actually met him at one of your events, and and he was a fantastic client, had an excellent product, and I wanted to introduce him to somebody that was doing events overseas because one of my other passions is obviously running events for up to 3,000 people and I had a client that I, I knew this was going to be a good match and um, it was going to be potentially millions of dollars of business his story was not good and he did not promote himself well although I could have I told him everyone how great he was he didn't he wasn't able to tell people how good he was and his story did not protrude how well his business was and he lost that opportunity and it's so so it's very very important that you do have a very good and strong story because that's that's what's going to help get those business connections going in your joint ventures so so i i'm i'm a big fan of the joint ventures but I, you also must have a very good story in order for those joint ventures to make you know make progress and be able to be um, affluential for your business. So, I, I completely agree with you. And Mark, I'd like to I'd like to take it and then throw it to you, so then you can you can throw it to Ron because I'd like to get his insights. He's a masterful storyteller as a as a motivational uh, guy, as is the MC, as the the guy that leads our events. But also, he's he's proof too of what can happen uh, from events and how how you can really take off and really do what you're meant to do. And so, Mark, I'll okay, give absolutely. It to you. <laughs> what I'm going to do is uh, I got one. I, I, Dutch wants to make one more point to you as okay. well because I'll tell you what you really hit it home with some of your points here. So everyone wants to say something. Go ahead, uh, Dutch. Well, my thing is just more about you know Dr. Ron and 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 what Dave and Dustin are doing more than anything. And you know, the shameless promotion, being blunt about it. I mean. 
Dave and Dawson, we had a student come into our event, I believe it was in April, that, that, that I was able to be a part of with you guys, mm -hmm. and did his first event ever, June 6th, 7th, and 8th, and never done a seminar before, really wasn't sure how to be a speaker, came, out, came in, did, did what, exactly what we told him to do, we assisted him, we helped him all the way through the process, and he did a half million in sales, he did almost 200,000 cash collected, and Dr. Ron led the way as the MC, but as really the 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 concierge, the, the 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 leader of the entire event, and I'll tell you, you know, Ron, from where you were 18 months ago, I don't know that I've seen a lot faster raises to just exceptional, incredible, unbelievable talent when it comes to speaking and and doing what you do. And and myself as a company, we've invested you know close to fifty thousand dollars in an event for this weekend coming up. And, and we have Ron as, as one of the principal speakers and leaders because he is so incredible and it was worth making that kind of investment in somebody who's so amazing. And so, you know, Ron, I, I just am excited to hear you and, and I wanted to jump in because you're just freaking awesome, brother. So go ahead. Yeah, well, it's really exciting before, before we bring it Ron as well. I just actually met him at, at the last event and, you know, I've worked with some great people like Jim Rohn and things like that. He was one of my mentors. And uh, I'll tell you what, I was truly blown away by his his presence, his caring, his ability to bring people into the right mindset regarding this whole thing. And, and I'll tell you what, uh, I can't say more about it myself. A wonderful thing. So that being said, you got a lot to live up to here, here Dr. Brown. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing these days and how you can help people in the selling side of things. Well, the, fir the first thing is that I'm <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I keep getting this. Somebody keeps taking pictures. Not I, yeah, I think it's, it's, so I I think it's, I think it's Dutch. And, uh, no, go ahead. Is Dutch? I'm like, I don't know. Somebody's, somebody's controlling my computer here. <laughs> <laughs> really funny, Dutch, you told a story about getting late to the event. Well, I came late to this event because I was actually, I clicked on my wrong email and I was on the webinar watching you guys and a hangout watching you guys and I can't figure out how come I couldn't see myself in the bottom. And it took me about 15 minutes before I realized I'm on the wrong link. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, That's too much. Well, I, I, I might be improving on the stage, but I've got plenty of room to grow right here in, uh, in Google Hangouts. Well, you know what? You know, it's okay because, you know, ultimately, this, this as you teach, you know, and of course, we all know is that, you know, humility is uh, the, the greatest way to greatness. And so we, you know, we just got to get there and do it. Whether it's sales, you got to get there and do it. You got to know that you don't know something and get going with it. So, you know, tell us a little bit about what you think is, you know, why is learning about selling so powerful and how do you help people uh, kind of advance in that in that area a little bit? Let, let me go back because, again, storytelling is so important. And when it comes from okay. your own past experience, it's a great uh, way of introducing uh, where you've come from. When I graduated from chiropractic school in 1983, I was this skinny little white kid, and I did have hair back then, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, I had braces on my teeth. I had a, a child under one years old, and I had no money. I had a bunch of debt from school. And when I arrived in Florida, I got a place to live. I rented some furniture. And I, had, I got a loan from the bank to start my practice, and I had nothing behind me to, to fall back on. So I had to work really hard to get ahead. So I had to figure out how to sell. And one of the books I had read said you got to do a survey. So you got to remember that Florida, July, is really hot down here. Here I am in a three-piece suit, because three-piece suits were really big back in that day, coming back again now. And here I am walking door-to-door -door with a clipboard, asking people questions and my real motivation was to let them know I was going to be moving in down the street in their neighborhood and would they be interested in getting on my mailing list and I'd walked 500 plus homes in a period of about a month and a half and so for me it was it was a uh, it was submersion into the selling world by fire now since that time that was a one-to-one -one experience I get in front of one person at a time and try to connect with them so they would have some confidence in me and want to seek me out. You wind the clock 30 plus years, and I won't go any more than that, 30 plus years later, and here I am figuring out what is the next way to advance my business and what I want to do in life. And one of the things I had learned along this journey was you've got to surround yourself with the right kind of people. You've got to get under the right tutelage, the right mentoring, and it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I'm 55 now. I've got mentors that are all on a screen here, and yeah, everybody's a lot younger than I am. And I've learned from these individuals. I've paid to be with these individuals to pick their brains and to learn what they know. And as a result of that, I had opportunities to get in front of 
more people on stage. So now when I had I have um, I'm on the road uh, this weekend. I'm going to be with Dutch, and we're going to be speaking to a couple hundred people. When I'm with Dave and Dustin, we got you know two three hundred people in a room, and it's just a tremendous opportunity to expand your brand, which again increases your ability to sell. Because when people know you, like you, and trust you, they will do business with you. That's actually uh, pretty exciting. Go ahead, Dave. You take care. You're back, so go ahead. Yeah, Ron, I was going to ask you a question. Now, as a speaker, uh, when you got one of your first opportunities to speak, tell us a story about when the person said, hey, uh, we want you to offer up something. Yeah. Well, you know my friends. They're clients of yours, uh, Bob and Ed Diamond, uh, invited me to come to speak at one of their real estate events because I was doing real estate investing and still do out in Las Vegas. Now, they had no idea I could speak in front of an audience. And at that event, I told Ed before I got on there that um, I was going to sell a coaching program, but I was just joking around. It was no real intent to sell. And I'm not, are you guys, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, because my screen went blank. And here I am, I get in front of an audience, and just speaking was relatively natural for me. And I ask everybody in the audience, who wants to be one of my, my coaching clients? And I'll t show you how to get to the deals faster. Well, about half the room raised their hands. Now, I had nothing on the line because I wasn't selling them anything. And they realized very quickly it was a joke. And at the end of my talk, Bob and Ed pulled me outside and said, that was absolutely incredible. We had no idea you could speak in front of people. You're selling a coaching program this weekend. I said, no, guys, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the confidence. But I don't have the coaching program built out. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to do yet. They said, no, on Sunday, and this was a Friday, on Sunday, you are selling. I said, guys, I'm really not comfortable with that. That's not, that's not who I am. Uh, but here I am Sunday afternoon in front of an audience selling a program I have not created yet, didn't know what would be in it, to a bunch of people I didn't really know. And I've got to tell you, if they could have seen my knees, they would have saw them shaking and almost hitting them. Because getting in front of people and speaking is one skill set. Getting in front of people and selling is a completely different skill set, which I did not have. Now, if you roll the clock forward, that's the reason why I wound up becoming friends with Dave and Dustin, because I had to go and I had to get a skill set that I did not possess. So for me, it was about getting in front of the right people and learning. And you know, over the, uh, I want to say, six, seven events now I've emceed, and I've been at a couple of other events before that, I've had the opportunity to watch Dave over and over again, to listen to Dustin over and over again, and I pick up new gems and new nuggets every time that expands my ability to speak and my ability to sell. Hey, Dr. Ron. Yes, sir. Mark, Mark, and Dave. We actually found out. There's a little, uh, little story. Dr. Ron's first attempt at selling. He actually bonused in a fish. There he is, right there. That was his first bonus. When you take action, you're gonna get this fish. But there's, there's good news and bad news. There's only one fish. Oh, only man. one. So Listen, that's how I got my wife. She loves fish like that. So. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is too hey, funny. Hey, Dr. Ron, I yes. got a question for you, real quick. Why should somebody show up to the event? Well, I, I live by this philosophy, and I coach people, and I let them know that I think that 80% of what happens in life is simply by showing up. You, you, you suit up, you show up, and you watch the magic happen. Nothing is going to happen if you stay at home. I can guarantee you that. Your life will not change until you take action. And, we, we're, and again, at the event, Dave, we're all in the same thing. Dutch, we're all of us. It's about taking action and changing your life. Most people, uh, and, I'll, and I'll do this now, and I said, most people are interested in success, but very few people are committed to it. And you're on a hangout right now with a group of people who are committed to success. And by the way, along, I think we all got stories we could tell forever about how we've kind of blown it in the past and we stumbled and we bumbled. But our persistence and our ability to show up every time and keep going at it has caused each of us to have our own successes in our each individual areas. What do, you, what do you like best about our events? Oh, wow. I, it's, it's about creating relationships. That's the most important thing for me. Now, I get great information. I get the ability to connect with people that are like-minded. And I, and I go through this at the event. It's like during our lives, we're surrounded by, and I don't mean this in a bad way, we're surrounded by a lot of people who are not like us. I call them the, the turkeys. They're the average person out there who's not interested in working on their own dreams, they're working on the dreams of someone else. 
when I get into your room and I get in around uh, you and, and Dustin, I get around people who are eagles, people who are used to flying alone, but now we're all together and there's this sense of camaraderie, the sense of energy in a room, the sense of excitement, and people walk away knowing their lives have changed from the four days they just spent together. And that's exciting. And that, ha that helps, that ramps me up every time and pushes me to that next level. You know what's really exciting about this? I was, you know, I was at this and I, and I couldn't believe what I was experiencing at the event myself. By the way, this, this hangout really isn't about the event so much. By the way, you know, where it's about selling, but it's, there's, there's so much to be learned at this event. In fact, picture this. I'm at this event for three days, you know, uh, plus some other time there. And the fact was is that this whole thing is about selling and persuasion and conversion and, and all this stuff, but really nobody's selling anything. It's really funny. It was a, there was no pitch fest going on. It was really uh, amazing to see how much you could actually learn at a selling event without selling really going on. And um, I, I was amazed because uh, of, of several things, because the people in the room really brought the best questions to the table, the best energy to the table. You had people who were in real businesses. I ended up doing, uh, a, a, you know, probably six, seven, well, at least six figures in, in joint ventures myself in the room just in a couple of days I was there. And I'll tell you what, it was, it was a, an amazing experience. By the way, um, well, like I said, this this event is not about the event, uh, but if you want to get information about the event, there's no there's no easy way to do that because we're not really selling the event here. But if you go to the right of this of this hangout, there's a little button there for a free strategy session, which says. Uh, uh, persuasion and conversion uh, strategy session for a free strategy session about how you can better sell and 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 we can help you apply this better to your situation. Some of you may be authors. You may be wondering how are we going to do this. Some of you may promote events and you don't know exactly where this may fit for for what you do. Some of you may be speakers. Some of you may be just infopreneurs or an expert who's looking to really get out there and make some serious money. The fact is is that if you click that, we'll kind of walk you through the process of of how it can apply to you. And and this is and this is at no charge. Uh, and then if you just ask about the event, they'll help you to to figure that as well. Okay. So that being said, go Dave. You you go. Actually, uh, you go back, Dave. You got it. All right. Thanks, my friend. Uh, real right. quick, I, I saw that uh, Deanna wanted to uh, to make a comment real quick. So let's go ahead and jump to okay. Deanna. And after that, we want to go to Kari. Okay. I think that was earlier, actually, Dave. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. <laughs> So, hey, Kari, let's uh, get you in here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and, uh, you know, you've been doing some really great things uh, in, in the area of, of how you can help people. But first, give us a little background on you and what you're doing these days to really help your clients out. Okay, well, um, my background is in the entertainment business. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So, um, you know. Was, by the way, by the way, you know, it was really funny. First, we had two of you, and then you disappeared. And so it's like I you're know, not only I, good at duplicating yourself, and then you were good at disappearing. It kept I mean, getting rid of again. me, and I kept trying to get back <laughs> in. So I spent the last 10, 15 minutes trying to get back on the Hangout. So um, I'm sorry I missed a couple of you guys, but looking forward to hearing more about it and looking back at the Hangout. So, well, my background is um, I grew up in the entertainment business uh, as an actor, and Dave kind of alluded to that um, on a television series called Give Me a Break um, when I was a kid. And I think at that time, you know, I went into it for, for reasons that were creative, but I really learned about promotion and selling um, because that's how they promote every, if you think about television and how they promote a new show that's coming on the air, without really understanding it, I was learning the business of marketing and sales at the highest level because the show I was on was on NBC for six years and the machine that basically I was part of you know I learned so much about it so when I left the series and went into broadcasting and went into starting my own businesses as a speaker as a mentor as a consultant you know I realized all of that information that I had is just so embedded in what I naturally do but I had this incredible master's degree at learning about it from being a part of that world for so long and I think for me I realized that was a gift that I received 
and I didn't actually do it on purpose, but when I went into the business world, I thought, wow, I would love to share that with people because I see so many business owners and entrepreneurs that have incredible products, incredible businesses. They have such a, a powerful message or service to share, but they don't know how to promote it. They don't know how to use media uh, to promote what they do. And it doesn't even necessarily mean they have to be on television, on a talk show, but just now with the age of the internet, how do they present themselves, um, you know, as far as visually by using little promo reel, sizzle reel, certain testimonials that don't feel like selling. I think people really in this age, they want authenticity. They want to feel people's heart. They want to feel their integrity. And, and I would venture to say that every single entrepreneur on this uh, hangout today feels that their product or service has value and they feel that if they can share it, it will actually serve people. So sometimes I think when people talk about selling, they get a, a strange reaction to the word selling. But in the way that I look at it, every single person has something really powerful and unique to offer the world. And it's about how do we use these different techniques to get that message out. You know, Carrie, that is so br brilliant. There's so many, you know, it's kind of a paradox. Here we are on this uh, hangout about selling more, right? And we're doing some, and we're actually saying that the average person in the world doesn't want to be sold. They don't want to be uh, sold into something. They don't want to be convinced into doing something. They don't want to be, but so, so we're talking about it. And for seven years, I've been teaching educational selling, which is one form of that. But <clears throat> Kari's talking about this whole positioning, kind of like as a, uh, as a celebrity, it's a positioning thing. It's a, it's, 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 you, what you have to do is you have to really position yourself to a market as the person who's going to educate them, is going to ed entertain them, is going to give them value. And you're not there to sell any, anybody because ultimately if they think you're there to sell them they're going to be wanted to be re repelled by that whole process so you know in in carry carry at this last uh, event she was talking a lot about this I said you know what there really is a huge need for people to position themselves and really this it's a thought leader position it's an expert position it's a celebrity position uh, and things like that and I and, and I know she's uh, so, so Carrie tell us a little bit about how you uh, do that for your clients and why it's so important for them to actually learn how to do some of that stuff well I think it's really like you said it's about how do you become the celebrity the most famous well-known person in your niche right and there is a technique to do that a lot of people really don't understand how that works, but it is really about people understanding how does the average customer understand that what differentiates you from the rest of the people in your market and you have to find a way to communicate that and like you said it's really not to me it's not a it is about selling but it's not about selling it's about helping people you know it's about how can I help people with my product and my service and I think when people you know, are thinking, I gotta sell this customer, I gotta close this customer, how can I close them, how can I sell them? People feel that energy and it will, you know, repel them. But if you go into it with a heart for service and how can I help them, how can I serve them, you know, with my product or service, and then of course, how do you present that and promote that effectively so people understand that, I think people really want to feel our hearts and they want to feel our integrity and that's why because there's so much selling going on and promoting and obviously we are selling something there is a sale that takes place but to me the exchange of you know of a monetary um, a monetary exchange is that you're doing that because you feel that what you're going to gain far exceeds what you're investing I mean, the return on your investment has to far exceed what you invest. So it's about investing in you, investing in your future. Yeah, that's that's really neat. I've been <clears throat> teaching thought leadership, and it's really about changing the world. And and ultimately, we have to want to change our, the lives of our clients, yeah. and we have to want to change everything that they're doing, their families or their businesses or whatever it is we help. And and it's such a beautiful thing to be able to do that. And sometimes it takes a little convincing, and and this approach helps them realize that we can help and that we can care. I I, I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, by the way, uh, Deanna, you had something to say, real quick. Go ahead. Actually, I did. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
I just wanted to give a shout out to Kari because I've actually worked with Kari for the past year and a half and um, I'm really excited that she's going to be at this event for with Dave and Dustin because if you're going to be at this event, she's an amazing person to sit and talk to. I've worked with her for several, several events and I've seen her actually sit down with students and be able to pull things out of them that they didn't even realize they had in them and she's got such a... Um, She's got such a passion for being able to work with students and figure out their marketing and figure out how to use media to, to brand them. And so um, I really encourage you, if you do come to this event, you know, trap trap Kari in a corner, have her sit down with you, make her, make her talk to you because she really is the real deal. She She's very, very smart. She's learned for many, many years how to use media, how to take your passion in your business and, and actually make make something with it. And she's very, very good. And I'm just blessed that, that I've been able to work with her for the last couple of years and and anyone that comes to this event, they're going to be very thrilled to be able to spend a couple of minutes with her. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing. I've learned the same thing just even from the few minutes her and I were sitting at a table together at the last event, and uh, she was talking about some pretty brilliant things. That were just mm -hmm. and, and it was just a, it was amazing. I missed her her, her full talk, but I was truly uh, uh, amazed by what I was learning because you know ultimately in in this world of, of, of business you know there's so much information going on there's so much communication going on from every different angle and literally the information age and the communication age has really kind of multiplied itself times itself and created such a glut of information overly communicated that nobody has the time to think and they don't have the time to really uh, see who can help them but if you can actually uh, become a celebrity if you can become the person who really is the most trusted kind of advisor or in a, in a marketplace, um, you know, you really can make a difference to them and you kind of like pierce the veil of, of all this uh, glut of people trying to sell them stuff, which is ultimately, I mean, you are going to sell them things, but ultimately you're, you're, you're doing it first from a, from a position of authority and authenticity. I think that's beautiful. So Carrie, uh, any final words on, on that front about how, you'd, uh, are you, uh, how you're looking forward to sharing some of these things at the event with uh, some of the people here? Yeah, well, I, uh, what's going to happen, you know, I think that where my area of expertise is, is taking an entrepreneur and a business owner and say, okay, show me what you've got. Like, you know, talk to those people about, you know, what are they doing for people to understand who they are? So that, that could be from their website. Do they have any media on their website? Do they have a promo reel? You know, when somebody says, what do you do? Not everybody is really good at doing their 15 to 30 second elevator pitch about what they do so maybe they hand them you know the smartphone and say well look at this and that's where they have a little you know even 20 second 30 second piece about what they do where other people that they've served or helped are talking about from their heart how they have changed their lives and so it's using different techniques that we want to teach the entrepreneurs so that maybe they're not the best at promoting themselves well let's use some of these media techniques that we can you know to get that message out so people really understand feel authentically how you the business owner can literally transform you know their lives in whatever area you're looking for to serve them that makes us a lot of sense. Go ahead, Dave. You take care. Yeah, and Kari, uh, real quick, I know you're going to be talking a lot about this at the event. If you can just give us a quick preview uh, of why somebody should listen to you at the event, what you're going to talk about. Well, I guess the question is, are you getting the results that you want in the area of feeling like everybody understands that you are the celebrity, you are that famous person in your niche? And if you're not getting those results right now, I just say, come to the event because that I have spent so many years, well, my own experience of being on television, but I have traveled the world with some of the most well-known, famous politicians, athletes, uh, uh, you know, uh, business people, um, and they all use the same techniques to keep their brand alive, to keep themselves in the public eye. Not everybody knows what those techniques are and what those secrets are, and that's what we're going to share at the event. I'm going to lay that all out for you, exactly how they do it. How do they keep themselves in the public eye? Because every well-known celebrity, athlete, business owner, politician, they also have to work 
to promote their brand and keep their brand alive, just like every other business owner. So if you want to learn that stuff and how that works, join us. We're going to have an incredible, incredible event. You know, you know, Carl. I just want to ask you this quick question. You know, some of some of you might not know uh, about your background in that. So, so tell us some of the the shows that you've been able to build your brand on, um, so that they can really understand a little about your background. Well, you know, I I grew up, you know, on this television series called Give Me a Break as a child. But I think one of the most significant events that really helped me to understand how I could serve people in this area was I spent quite a few years on the road with an event called Get Motivated. Um, it was a speaking event with um, some of the most well-known leaders and achievers in our country, actually in the world. Um, you know, our regular uh, speakers were uh, General Colin Powell. Uh, we've had uh, past presidents, Mr. Bush, Mrs. Bush, Laura Bush, uh, George W. Steve Forbes was a regular um, speaker at our event. Rudy Giuliani, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Montana. Um, I mean, the list just, just goes on and on. We've had pretty much every single NBA and NFL Hall of Fame athlete on our platform, almost every single Olympian. And success and how to achieve success in the world, you know, it's very similar. There's so many. What I really got is that the way every single one of those people achieved, not only achieved their success, but maintained that consistent, enduring success, the techniques are all very, very similar as to what they use and what they apply. And I think that's what really put the light bulb on, that I could share this information with the average entrepreneur who maybe didn't come from an entrepreneurial family, has a dream and, and, and a desire to have a business, but maybe isn't where they want to be, and kind of pull the veil back on what everybody is doing at that level to maintain and not only achieve their success, to, but to maintain it. Well, thanks very much. Scary. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun at this event. I'm very, very, very excited. And uh, I just want to kind of uh, talk a little bit more about what we're going to be doing. And some of the things that you could consider we're going to be talking about is using subconscious communication uh, to sell. And what I mean by that is we're going to be talking to a lot of advanced strategies at this event. And uh, I'm excited. We've got a great team of trainers that are going to be here. Uh, one of the things if you're considering coming, uh, the thing that we do at all our events is it's application process only. You have to apply to come to our events. Obviously, we've got a lot of famous people that come to our event, a lot of famous speakers. What we do is we empower leaders, so it's a different conversation. So if you're considering coming, this isn't for everybody. Uh, you've got to be in line with all of our goals, which is we want to empower leaders to empower the world. And I know everybody on here is really passionate about that uh, and how important that is uh, for there. So uh, if you want to apply, uh, what you have to do is you can go to the sellmoresummit.com backslash apply, and you'll be able to, to apply for this. But before I do that, uh, I want to head over to, to Dutch and talk a little bit more about Dutch. When, when you make the sale and sell more, uh, what are some of your favorite strategies? What are the, the two things that you do that you should tell me that is wrong and give me three of your best strategies? One, one more time, Dave. Two of my what? Two of the, the things that you see most salespeople do wrong and then okay. two of your favorite strategies. Okay. So two of the things that I see people do wrong the most when I really think about this, and I see sales trainers butcher this. I mean, it's like one of the worst things I see ever taught by sales trainers ever and it, it drives me like bananas because they're just killing people when they do this is is when when people get you get finished presenting a product presenting a service you know whether it's a from stage or it's it's one on one in a sit down or it's in a relationship or you're sitting at a dinner table and you're trying to close you know a high end deal or whatever it is this is the one thing that sales trainers just butcher and and I can't even believe it's ever even said and they say ask for the not all of you at once but you know hey <laughs> sale ask for the money yeah. the sale? ask for the money ask for the sale and it's the stupidest technique in the history of selling 
if you have to ask for the sale, if you have to ask for the money at the end of, of, of what you have to offer for somebody, then you've already lost the sale. The, the, the reality is is that once you get to the point in time where it's time for you to finish a sale, for you to close the deal, for you to, to, to get to the finish line, then it's what we call a direct command. It's a simple request in the correct frame. You know, do you want to have a better business? Do you want to have a better life? Do you want to be one of the greatest salespeople in the history of mankind? And they say, yes, good. You sign the bottom line. And to sign the bottom line, whether it's sign the contract, whether it's hand over your credit card, whether it's put your information on the screen in front of you, whether it's, it's go ahead and do what you need to do to succeed in your life, whether it's let's go ahead and put fi finalize the contract so we can do business together. You have to tell people what they need to do in a polite, respectful way, but you have to tell them what to do. And that's probably the, 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 one of the biggest ones I ever heard. And then it's people who talk, people who just talk, 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 talk when they try and sell and they throw up. That's the second one that drives me bananas, Dave. Look, the first rule of, 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 of real selling is, is you had to have listened to people in order, in order to know what they truly want. And so what speakers have a doubly hard job to do, what someone, a master like you, Dave, does, is you've listened to people for so long that now you can speak into their existing conversation, into their lives, because you've listened and you know what the frame is. And what happens is a lot of people don't shut up long enough to understand what people want in order to be able to sell them correctly. I can't even remember what the last thing he asked me was, Dave, but I'll tell you those two are my two big techniques to share with everybody. And 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 if you want to ask me the last one one more time, you can, brother. Okay, my friend. Well yeah, I think you're right. You know, a lot of people forget big thing in sales is a call to action. You gotta tell people what to do. Uh, and a lot of people are afraid to ask for the sale. Uh, and do that. And one of the biggest things that salespeople do is talk too much. Uh, a better strategy we do what they call the Socrates way of selling is question-based selling. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, at this Sell More event is really having people originate for themselves that they want and they need that. And when you can do that uh, and communicate in that style, which we call non-resistance communication, uh, is a much more empowering way. We don't want to be a pushy salesman. Nobody wants to listen to a pushy salesman or nobody even wants to be a pushy salesman. So don't be a pushy salesman. Uh, and a better way to do that is to build value for people, to ask the right questions and have them originate for themselves. And so, uh, hey, real uh, quick, Dave, I want to... Dave, before you do that, go talk on that value point for a second. You know, because I've noticed that your events are unbelievably valuable full and and how you've taught other people to have these really high intensely value uh, events that that make everybody there want to work with the the producer and the speakers more than than if you were to just say constantly sell them or pitch them and things like that that that's a great question so um, you know mark knows that my past company we did about 2000 seminars a year and so we started to test all these different things uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see if you're putting an event on is you'll go to an event, they'll have like 20 speakers all selling something, no value, and that used to work 10 years ago, that doesn't work today. Uh, and the, the thing that you want to consider, like maybe when you do your boot camp, is the more you give, the more you make. People think they need to hold back information and that, that's going to hinder the sale. But in fact, what it will do is the more value you give to people, the more they will want to invest in you. So obviously what we do at ours events is we build so much value, so much tools and strategies. We help people uh, so much that people say that we don't have to sell anything because people say, I want, I need that. And that's what you got to consider in your business is how can you make your webinar, your event, that you give so much value and you show so much value to people that they naturally say, I want and I need you. And I think that's really the art of the sell. The other thing too is, is that people don't buy the product, they buy the results the product gives them. And so one of the biggest things that me and Dustin really focused in on our business is not really about us and our product and services, but really getting people results. So if you're selling something, Maybe it's a supplement, maybe you're a coach, uh, but one of the things you want to do is if you can get people results, then there is no selling. And that's one of the beautiful things that we do at our boot camp is we call accelerated learning. We teach, 
we have people interact, we make joint ventures, and our people get results. And so like Mark discussed, we don't have to sell. People just naturally say, I want these guys. And, and I want you to think about that in your business is stop selling and start building value. And I think that's a big thing salespeople want to do is they want to sell. Uh, you know, Dustin, really, one, one, one little quick th I thought about it again because I just can't <clears> – <throat> Uh, stop without this because ultimately it's this whole idea of really give and, and it shall be given to you, right? I mean, it's this whole idea that, you know, if you really do care about people, if you give to them, it naturally does, it comes back to you. And, and even though most people in their business are thinking, okay, how can I get more sales? Ultimately, it is this paradox that really the, the best way to, to sell more is to, is to really give more. So anyway, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, you know, obviously it's a law of exchange, or even Jesus talked about it's in giving that you receive. And uh, I think as a, as, a, as a business or an organization or even a salesperson, really building value for people, treating people uh, uh, the way that you want to be treated is absolutely important. Um, and I think it's a part of the sales process. So really we've heard of A, B, C, always be closing, right? Let's change it to A, B, H, always be helping or serving. And I want to kind of refer to Ron. Uh, Ron, let's tell us a little bit about your, your opinion. Well, everything you said is absolutely true, but one of the things that just, you asked the question before, so what do I like best about your events? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, well, I'll tell you what the hardest thing about your events is for me. We do a, um, a, um, a kind of a networking session, fast networking session, and I get to be in charge of that, and I'll tell you what, people get so excited about making connections with other people and I've watched these connections lead to more sales for their individual businesses and when they get in they get in this line and they're doing this speed networking it's so hard to get them apart and get, make a move to the next person it's like herding cats it's one of the hardest things I have to do the entire four days because getting to know other people uh, and and expanding yourself through their sphere of influence can massively help you sell a lot more. In this room, getting together with people that have um, a sphere of influence of several hundred, maybe even thousands of people, you're going to be in a room full of a couple hundred people that have at least a hundred people in their network that you can expose yourself to. So the gold is in the connections and the relationships you build. Yeah, absolutely. You're only one relationship joint venture away from a million bucks. Yeah. You can have an average product to be an average business owner, even below average business owner. But if you have the right connections, you can make a million dollars in this business. We see it all the time. We see, you know, average speakers, average products with great relationships that make millions of dollars. And one of the things that I learned from Tony Robbins is, is you become who you surround yourself with most. It's the law of proximity, and all of us can't stress it enough. Get involved. Surround yourself with successful people. Uh, I can promise you this. Uh, all of the, the trainers that are speaking at our event all come from, um, from integrity, from authenticity, that are experts. They do what they say. They're going to be training you. And what's really interesting about our events is not only going to be teaching you, you're going to be actually doing it there. This is a workshop environment uh, that's absolutely going to blow you away. I know, Mark, you're going to be there talking about Google Hangouts and how to implement that in your business. Uh, Kari's going to talk about how to celebritize yourself and your brand. Ron's going to talk about empowering the mindset, making these joint ventures. Uh, Deanna's going to talk about the art of joint ventures, which for me, joint ventures are very natural. I love to, to joint venture. Some people might have a problem with it. So we do a forced joint venture, a facilitated joint venture there. She's going to be taking you through a process that you're going to leave with joint ventures before you leave. So it, it, it's a great thing. And then Dutch it, it is going to be coaching people one-to-one -one there. He's going to be talking about how to create your, your own coaching program, your back end. I'm telling you, we're going to have a lot of fun, right, friends? You got it. Matter of oh, yeah. fact, what, I, what I'd like to do is, uh, pretty, I think we're pretty close to ending here, so what I'd like to do is everybody to give their one-minute word of wisdom, this one-minute uh, kind of 60 seconds of, of you know, why is uh, learning this kind of approach to selling so powerful, why you need to actually implement it in your business, and, and why maybe even the Sell More Summit is the best place to actually go to actually do that. So who wants to go first? Raise your hand. You can... 
Okay, go ahead, Dustin. Well, quite frankly, the old way of selling is out. You know, we as a society continue to evolve, so the hard pressure sales tactics, even the stuff that you might have learned 10, 10 years ago, as, re as, as recent as 10 years ago, that sort of stuff is less effective. You know, some of it has its place, but in most environments that is that is less effective and I think it was was, was Kari who said that people want to see authenticity they have to have that feeling they have to know that you're the person for them and so there's a lot more uh, factors going into creating a trust-based sales situation and uh, you know the strategies quite frankly from that, that, that we all have learned and you may have learned uh, just simply are going to be less effective today yeah that's awesome Dustin who wants to go next well, I'll go next real quick. So my my thought on this is really simple. You know, you, we've all heard this less is more, right? And ultimately, less pressure, a less pressured way to sell, a less stress to clients, less in their face stuff is actually more pressure to actually get them to buy. And if you want to learn that approach to actually having so much pressure without actually any hype and and, and obnoxious uh, over your head beating kind of, of, of selling, then then not only is this event the place to go, but learning Dustin and Dave's approach to doing that. In fact, if you want to experience that, you can click to the right of this hangout and there's a, a free strategy session about how you can learn how to better persuade and convert people to, to, to really for your audiences as well and at no charge to you. So you can click that link and do that. But I would absolutely, if, I, if, if, the, only, if the only thing I had to do uh, in, in the month of July is to is to is to figure out some way to get more sales into my enterprise would be to go to the Sell More Summit and because it's it's really that good at helping you learn how to get some of this stuff done. Okay, who wants to go next? Okay, Ron. I'll go. Uh, Dustin hit on something really important. Kari talked about it before. We live in a different world today. The internet has changed the world in so many ways, but has leveled the playing field. And it's allowed people to become a lot more cynical and non-trusting because of so much of uh, dishonesty they have seen in the media and across the planet. And as a result of that, we have to take new strategies that we're going to be focusing in at this event on how to actually create a connection with people that builds that trust, that allows them to get past that so you can create a relationship based upon service and about giving them something of great value and to be more than willing to buy from you because it's a relationship-based transaction, no longer a pressure-based transaction. This event is going to really show you, I, and I'm, I'm going to use the word, and I know it's probably overused, ninja techniques on how to get people to do business with you that nobody else is teaching. Yeah, that's fantastic, Ron. That makes all the sense in the world. Okay, who's next? We got uh, Kari. Kari, all right. You know, you know what, one of the things you got to remember is you got to put your hand next to your face because sometimes it's not in the viewing area. All right, there we go. All right, Kari. Kari, tell us. Um, no, what I want to say, and it kind of you know goes along with what everybody else is saying, but I do want to say that the one thing about this event that I think is so so powerful, not even just I mean learning the techniques from the platform. It's if you go there and watch how the event works, how how you feel at the event, I guarantee you have not experienced this in any other seminar that you've ever been to. It's one of the reasons why I've been so passionate about working with Dave and Dustin and the rest of the people on this call is because it's so important to me. I don't even want to be in this industry if I can't be surrounded by people that their first desire is to serve and then the aspect of selling comes, you know, on the it comes as a byproduct of your desire to serve. So I will just say that, you know, I mean it's one of those things where you can't know until you experience it. So just being at the event and watching how the event works will absolutely change your business aside from everything you're going to learn right from the platform. So it's one of the reasons why I'm a part of it and I am still learning all the time from all the people that are there. I'm in the back taking notes, you know, and learning. Yeah. Yeah, truly very true. I love it. Okay, Deanna, go ahead. I got Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I just want to kind of piggyback on what Ron was saying. I think, you know, a lot of it is building relationships, but the other th side of it is if you don't think your competitors aren't doing it, you're wrong because they are. Um, and so, you know, the one thing that I will say is, is that these type of events, and I know that, I mean, I've been to Dave and Dustin's events for years. Um, I actually tripled my business four, I think four years ago by going to one of their events. Um, they have the cream of the crop speakers there. They have the cream of the crop um, industry leaders that are actually sitting in the room. You would be surprised at who's sitting right next to you. Um, that will be a game changer for your business. So, um, you know, I really encourage you to, if you can make it to go, because it's amazing the connections that you're going to make, um, the resources you're going to get from that room, whether it's from the speakers or whether it's from just your peers sitting next to you. Um, and there are some massive players that I already know are going to be there and that I've seen in the past. So I really encourage everyone to try to use this time to get ahead of your competition because what they're bringing, I, I've already seen some of them, uh, some of their presentations and talked to them. They're bringing some of the 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 newest and most innovative methods and ways to make your business grow. So um, I, I highly encourage you to get there, um, make it happen, and invest in your business. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. All right, so we're going to try to get uh, Dutch in here next. Okay, go ahead, Dutch, you go. Wow, so much to say after all of, all these incredible. I mean, I just you know what else? What else can I say at this point? It's it's incredible how much fun we're going to have, right? I mean. Like we talk about all the techniques and we talk about the tools and we talk about you got to show up and all of those things, but we, we have a lot of fun. We're, we're like a family. I mean, we, we, we come together. We, we do monumental breakthrough things. We, we get deep with each other. We laugh together. We share. We break bread together, and, and, and it's just going to be a blast. And, and I'll tell you, just like Deanna, if I go back you know, seven years ago, Dave and Dust had created a, an atmosphere where for me to do what I needed to do in business just helped me really, you know, leapfrog years of, of, of trial and error, years of, of, of hard work, years of, of trying to make connections and relationships. So, you know, I, I love these guys. We're going to have a blast. Um, you know, we, we, we're, we're, you know, one of the things that we wrote in the, the chat box here, which I think is kind of funny, is, is, is someone said, you know, good job, Ron, to pass it on. Right, and 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 as as he set up Dave, and I and I, I typed in the box. He said the chat box between the panelists. I said he he's a pro, right? And 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 after that, I said, well, wait, you know, we're all pros, and and I mean, we're really freaking good at what we do. And and, and sometimes you got you got to take you know, and I, and I do say that with humility because I know each of us have our have our, our screw ups in business and in life, and, and 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 we've actually seen that for each other over the years. But I'll tell you, man, when it comes to this subject. When it comes to what we're going to do, I don't know any group of individuals that have more credibility. I don't know any group of individuals that have bigger hearts and 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 and, and bigger spirits in order to make an impact and, and 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 change some people's lives, change their businesses, change change how they look at things. And, and so, like this, I'm just super pumped, and and I, I can't even express the 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 amount of care and and, and gratitude. And and I just you know want to thank everybody who's on. For the blessing for us to be able to come out and serve you and and do what we're gonna do with you and and, and I'll, I'll wrap up with with that Mark and thanks for hosting too brother I really appreciate it. Hey, it's my pleasure. Hey Dave, why don't you give us the last uh, word of wisdom uh, finale here? So grand finale. Well, I've been sharing this and uh, there's only one person who knows this. Uh, obviously, you know I've done a lot of presentations and got to test a lot of different things. Well, three years ago, when we started Speaking Empire, everybody came to me and Dustin is, Dave, teach me how to close. Teach me how to do the Pied Piper of presentations. And so what happened is we learned from our customer and we started writing these presentations. So after five years, 500 presentations later, I have been working for hours and hours and I created the new presentation blueprint the 2015 2.0 presentation blueprint that all of us have seen and it's got lots of 40 new different components that were already onto that amazing formula. So I went back to the drawing board uh, after writing all these presentations, doing lots of research uh, because my new book's coming out. Uh, I'm going to be unveiling the brand new presentation blueprint and I can tell you I have absolutely excited because the one before 
has made over $100 million for our clients and has gotten people extraordinary results. This next one is catastrophically going to be a thousand times better. So you guys haven't even seen it yet, and uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So I'm really happy to, to, to launch that. And so if you are speaking from stage, own a business, you got to be there. If you're a speaker, you got to be the Speaking Empire event. That's all there is to it. We can't say anything more. Um, and I hope everybody has lots of fun. And everybody uh, that's here it, it is my family, and I appreciate all of you, and I care about all of you, and I love all of you. And uh, like we said, we're going to have fun. And we're going to blow everybody away with our specialized knowledge, with our gift on the planet. And again, I can't stre stress enough. I'm very focused and very clear what my, my mission is. It's to empower leaders, to empower the world. And we've got the trainers that absolutely have the tools to help people. So um, I can't take to tell you enough. I'm so excited, and uh, we're going to have lots of fun. So again, uh, some of the things that uh, we talked about, uh, you know, folks, stop selling features. Don't sell the benefit. Sell the benefit of the benefit. Uh, making sure that you're building value for your folks. Uh, stop selling, start solving problems. Everybody goes from pain toward pleasure. Uh, make sure that you're not selling one-to-one. -one. Open up the strategy selling one-to-many. Uh, making sure that you have created, like Dutch talked about, the big back end. Making sure, like Deanna talked about, getting your joint ventures. Who is your ideal customer? Who's got the list? Uh, Dustin talked about the irresistible offer, the hot button close. Kari talked about positioning you and your brand as the Ferrari or the Lamborghini. Uh, and like Ryan talked about, just empowering yourself to play a bigger game. Uh, and then Mark talking about using the strategy here to promote your business, which is a Google Hangout. So uh, we had a lot of fun, everybody. And again, uh, if you need some more help or need some coaching, we're going to give you, uh, as our gift to you, you can come to the strategy session. But if you'd like to come to our event, uh, you have to apply. Uh, you can click over there and, and apply for our event. So, uh, again, Mark, thank you for putting this all together, and, and we appreciate you. Hey, it was absolutely my pleasure because uh, this was truly uh, – this is a great experience. It really is. Ultimately, you know, being able to bring this many great people, you know, getting their schedules to come together like this is a hard thing to do for people. But, you know, Google Hangouts, no matter where we're at, we can take off, you know, 90 minutes to make something special like this. And I appreciate every single one of you. You guys added so much to this, our interactions, the words of wisdom, uh, the selling strategies and everything else. And of course, we were all centered around this topic of of selling more, and which ultimately believes, you know, we we've learned here that it's really not about selling; it's it's about really caring and putting our energies into the right processes and systems that will end end up people begging to buy from us as opposed to actually us trying to beg them to buy for, to sell to them. So this is really great stuff. It was my pleasure to do this. Uh, on behalf of everybody here, you guys can all take yourself off mute. We can all say goodbye together. And um, I really appreciate every one of you guys being here. And so everybody have a blessed day. Everybody take care. Have a good and prosperous week. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. See you later.